Welcome everybody to our monthly virtual lecture. As a reminder, this lecture is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel in the coming days. My name is Christopher Davis and I'm pleased to introduce our speaker today, Carla Gonzalez. Today she will show you some of the new or improved features that are offered through Geoscience Analyst version 3.1. I'd like to remind you that if you have yet to download the new version, you can find it on our website at miragiosciencecom If you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to type them in the Q&A or raise your hand. Please be aware that Carla may wait to the end to answer the question. Carla did tell me prior that she wouldn't be no more than 15 minutes. So Carla, you're on the clock. <laughs> no pressure. Thanks, Chris. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to be showing is how to create a boundary curve. And that is a pro feature. So I'll just turn on these points. We're going to be creating a boundary curve around these sets of points. Now, just for a bit of context, these points are actually markers that they are at the contact between this green unit, which is the hidden formation, and this yellow unit, which is the mill rock member. So the goal here is to use these points and the boundary curve that we're going to create to, to design a surface that's going to represent the contact between those two lithologies. Now, back in the old days of Geoscience Analyst 3.0, you could manually digitize this, this curve. But now in the new version, 3.1, you can do this automatically by right-clicking on the markers and selecting New Boundary Curve from Nodes. So you'll, there's, a new, there's a preview in yellow on the viewport here. It's got a normal of 001. You can edit these values manually. I find these two buttons on the right hand side are usually easier to use. You've got the use current camera plane. So as you rotate your camera and set this, it'll that boundary curve is going to be on the plane of your of your view of your camera. Now I found it's often easier if you click on this light bulb. It's calculate normal from medium plane of nodes. So this is gonna set the normal to the median plane of the input object, which in this case are these marker points. I can also change the scaling, for example, here, 50. I can make it 100 so that at, at 100, the spatial extent of that curve should be pretty much exactly the same as the spatial extent of the point. And I'll put it at 125%. And I'll click OK. Now there was this new uh, object created. It's called boundary curve. And then in brackets, it's got the name of the input object, in this case, markers. And it's 125% size. Now I'm going to use this curve that we just created, as well as these points, to create the surface. So for that, I'll go to the Utilities menu, Surface Designer. I'll choose the curve. There's an option for a whole curves, but we're not gonna use it right now. So we'll go ahead and choose the control points and create surface. So here we created a surface whose extent is restricted by this outer perimeter of this boundary curve that we created. And it bends and warps to fit the, these control points, these markers that we had selected. So that's the first feature. That was how to create a boundary curve and then use that to create a surface. The next feature is a free feature and it's uh, for block model visualization. So I'll just turn on this flin flon model. It's got a magnetics property displayed on your traditional U, V, and Z sections. Now you will see there's a new area right here that says arbitrary section. What that will allow you to do is to visualize your block model data in any given direction. So I'll turn that on. And the default will be of a dip of 90 and a strike of 0. I can change these manually. For example, a dip of 60 and a strike of 350. And, uh, and then I can analyze, I can visualize my data in this particular orientation. I chose a specific one because that's the roughly the direction of our ore body. So it might be an orientation that you're interested in. Um, you can also use this button here to draw an arbitrary section on the viewport. 
oops, maybe not my best orientation ever. I need to go back to art school. There you go. Um, so I can change that orientation. I can draw it however I like, and I can flip the strike of that section. Now, another thing you can do is select always face camera. So as you rotate the camera, this arbitrary section is going to rotate as well to always face you. It'll remain perpendicular to, your, to you, pretty much. So you can find an orientation that you like here, maybe something like this, and then unselect always face camera. So now when you rotate your, your viewport, you'll see that that remains static. And if that's an orientation that you like, then you can move the slider again to visualize the rest of your block model data. So that's the arbitrary section. It's, uh, it's just a, a different way of visualizing your data that's a more free and more dynamic. All right, I'll put these back on and I'm gonna display the geology model. So the next thing that I'm gonna be showing is a pro feature and that will be how to validate your geological model with your geophysical data so for that we need a geological model which is what i'm showing right now it's got uh, all of these classes including our ore body in red right here then i also need some geophysics data i've got a fixed wing falcon that has airborne magnetics data maybe here you go So I'm going to be adding a column to my geology model, and I'm going to call it mag contrast. I'm going to give that ore body a mag contrast of 0 0.05, and I'm going to leave the mag contrast for all the other units or lithologies as zero. And you'll see that created new data in my block model, where well, there you go, where that um, that ore body has that, pro that value of 0 0.05 and the rest is all zero. All right, now I'm ready to compute my forward model. So I'll go to the geophysics menu, compute forward model. This is a magnetics type. I'll choose my observation points. I'll set a field strength an inclination and a declination. I'll choose my topography surface, then that block model with that data that we just created, that mag contrast data. And I'll, now that I've selected everything, I'll click OK. So now we have, we have a new data here. It's called forward model. Um, you can flip between the two of them to compare these, these two different data visually. But there's another way to compare them, and that would be to use the 2D Profile Viewer. So to do that, you can go to the Panels menu, 2D Profile Viewer. And I'll open this up. There. I'll select this curve, and it right away drew a profile of my airborne mag data. I'll add data, I'll add that forward model, and I'll just change the color really quickly. Maybe a blue would be good here. And change this to this. Then I'll add a legend. So now we can see if the response from our geological model, which is this blue profile, matches the observed geophysical data, which is this purple pink profile. And right now, we're looking at the profile along this specific line, the one with the anomaly on it. And I can, I can flip through the different lines by either playing with the slider or increasing or decreasing the number here. Great, so that was how to, how to validate your geological model with your geophysics data. So next up, last but not least, we're going to be looking at VP models. So just a quick description. They are made of tightly compacted prisms that conform to geologic 
geological boundaries, and these allow styles of inversions and forward modeling in a more geologically driven way. Now, uh, one way to import that would, go to, would be to go to File, Import, VP Models. I find sometimes the easiest way is to just drag and drop it from your File Explorer, like that. So you, it created a VP Imports folder, and it's got this VP model as well as the points with the response. You can tell by the name Mount Dor Local that this data is from Mount Dor, Queensland, Australia. And we'll look at this VP model in the information tab. You'll see it's telling us its type VP model, how many cells are in it, and the XYZ extents and range of your data. In the metadata area, you'll see a bunch of information that could maybe be useful to you, like the base of the model elevation, enclosing half space elevation, etc. I'll turn off the points for a second, just to focus on this model, and I'll make this a different color. And I'll turn on the grid. So now if you select each of these cells, you'll see that these cells are really more like prisms that, that conform to these geological boundaries. And uh, just exploring the visual parameters a little bit more, you'll see there's a filter basement thickness. You can unselect that. And uh, this is because VP basements typically go down to 25 kilometers. So um, you can hide that at any given depth. You can also add a Z section and change its depth, for example, negative 5,000. You can also make ISO values, for example, FASIS 1 ISO values. So now you're seeing all the cells that correspond to this specific unit. And that's a, that's a VVP, VP model. So now we can also look at the points that got imported along with it. And uh, so these points, have a have background data that's from a half space or from a regional model. They've also got some calculated response as well as observed data. And that all together would would be how to visualize how to import and visualize your VP models in Geoscience Analyst. And if I'm not mistaken, that's all of the features that I'm going to show today. Wow, that was great. All under 12 minutes. Thanks, Carla. And thank you for everyone who joined us today. Uh, for those of you who are in the lecture, uh, we'll give you about a half a minute to, uh, to type any questions uh, you may have. Uh, if you have any further questions after we're done or in the future, uh, please do not hesitate to email us at uh, support at miragiosciencecom We look forward to seeing you next month when James Reed will prepare and invert DC data with UBC GIFs, DC IP3D, and Geoscience Analyst Pro Geophysics. Please note that James is actually based in Perth, Western Australia. So if you're in North America and you're not a night owl, you'll probably have to catch a recording on our YouTube channel. Thank you everyone for coming.